learn from a bum, Omar, Shamsuddin. What I learned from a bum, maybe it's what not to do. Up, up seven easy. There's a reason why after 100 channels destroyed, Angel Snub Nub 7 is still here. There's a reason why nobody wanna get in a beat with Angel Snub Nub 7. But you don't take me seriously.
This is a story about control. My control. Control of what I say and control of what I do. And this time I'm gonna do it my way. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Are we ready? I am. Because it's all about control. And I've got lots of it. At least I went to the Cardinals baseball game. People, people actually bought my records. 
People actually went to come to see me in concert. I experienced those things. That's why I got all caught up. Because I knew we could be, we could do this. You invest in Jesus. You invest in Panafricanism. You invest in all this stuff. It ain't give, it don't give you nothing. At least I was able to get a little something out of the out of out of the music thing. When I was in the when I was in the nation of Islam, I got absolutely nothing. And those people who are caught up in the hype, they don't like to hear me talk about burn up bean pies and sleeping on pickle barrel. Somebody wrote on my post on Facebook, okay man, okay, you you stepped on a pickle barrel and they gave you burn up bean pies. Okay, so what? They don't want to hear that because they caught up in that. And you're not even getting a burn up bean pie. And they're not even giving you a pickle barrel to sleep on. You got to provide your own. They're not giving you absolutely nothing. I cannot be real to you unless I'm real to myself. And this did not happen overnight. Because for a long time I'm in denial like you are. I want to blame. I want to blame the police department. I want to blame Anthony Ross. I want to blame the, the squirrel climbing up the tree. I want to blame everybody except myself. Who put me in the situation? It was me. All voluntarily. There's no chains on my wrist. There's no, there's nothing on my ankles. It was all voluntary because I'm caught up in the false hopes, the false dreams, the fantasy world that I created in my head. The fantasy world created in my head. Oh, I can see this. And I hear the fantasy when these people respond to me on Facebook, when they come here and talk to us, they live in a fantasy world. They live in a place that don't exist. But then I got a reality check, my friend. I got a reality check when they put them handcuffs on me. When I had to go to jail and they tell you to strip down and show your butt cheeks. And they give you a bologna sandwich and some 2% ass milk. Now the reality sets in. But there's nothing wrong. I'm not embarrassed. I was. I'm not embarrassed no more. Because it's all right to make a mistake. It's all right, y'all. It's all right to make a mistake. It's all right to be to, to be in error. The problem is if you don't admit to your mistakes, if you don't admit to the error, and you don't learn nothing from your mistake. There was a cartoon called uh, Family Guy. And Peter Griffin always doing something crazy and Peter Griffin was facing a long time in jail and he was able to get out of it and his son Chris asked him daddy did you learn anything Peter Griffin said no <laughs> learn nothing and so the next episode, Peter's still doing crazy stuff because he don't learn nothing. Keep doing the same stuff over and over. But in a cartoon, you can't suffer. In a cartoon, you can't die. 
But in real life, you suffer. In real life, you die. How many people in the graveyard, in the cemetery, because they made a, a slight mistake, they paid with their life. And it don't make no difference whether you're rich or poor, your skin color, it don't make no difference. I believe, because I don't know, so I have to say I believe. I believe. I believe Michael Jackson died prematurely. Michael Jackson died prematurely because he wouldn't listen to those who loved him. Because Michael caught up in his own hype. Michael caught up in this environment that's parasitic to him. But Michael don't want nobody to help, just like I did. I didn't want to. I don't want to hear that. I'm gonna do my thing, like my, like James Brown said. So Mike, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my thing. I don't want to hear all that. And so now Michael is in the graveyard. Prince is in the graveyard. Whitney Houston is in the graveyard and they rich with all these things and they had a lot of friends thousands and millions of fans it didn't stop them now they in the grave because of a mistake I made a video warning Beyonce about dancing around in those high heels. That was Prince problem. And then those high heels are not natural. And they were on your your ligaments and, your, and the cartilage in your in your bones. That's not natural. You dancing and flying around. That's gonna go. That's gonna get to you. It got the prince. And he started taking drugs. Now he dead. You think it's cute? There's a lot of women who ain't Beyonce, who didn't do all that dancing. They would tell you they having hip problems. But you can't tell nobody nothing. You can't tell. When people want to die, when people hard headed, you just got to let them be. They on their way to the graveyard. When they ready to die, they just, this their time to die. It was not my time to die. It wasn't my time. And I learned my lesson. I'm no longer in denial. I accept my responsibility. I hold myself accountable for putting me in that situation. Even with this woman we call poor child. When I began to see what she really was before I got in too deep, even though I would have been homeless, it's better to have been homeless they continue to mess around with her. But I stayed. And it didn't get better. Then years later, and even with the lady we call the doo-doo lady, I, I saw, but we ignore. We got to get out when the getting's good. But we don't because we get up, we get caught up in the fantasy. We get caught up in the hype. We get caught up in this delusion that we, oh, it, it can't be like that. They're not really like that. Just give them a No. Even that woman, what's her name? Uh, that Karen S. chick. 
that Karen S. Chick said, when a person show you who they are, you better take that to heart. Because that's what they are. So, I've learned a lot of lessons. So, you might see me make certain moves or, or whatever. I got to do it. You got to you got to do like Barney Fife said. You got to nip it in the bud. You got to cut it off. Because if you don't cut it off, you're going to feel sorry in the end. I don't care how pretty she is. I don't care how nice you think he is. It's not all what it seems to be. <laughs> Don said, what's the name of the doo-doo lady channel? <laughs> so I don't expect, I don't expect you to like Angel Snub Nub 7. Because you don't like people that keep it real. There's, there's some men that, that have a problem with women because they want to sit at home and watch TV, play video games, and she go out and work. And when she come back from work, she got to cook and clean, take care of the children, and, and all that type of stuff. And you ain't did a damn thing. You sitting at home. Oh, why you nagging me? It's hard out, it's hard out here for a black man. You know the white, you know why they don't want us to work. You tripping, sister. I guess you want, you really looking for a white man. No, the reality is your ass is lazy. She's doing nothing wrong to tell you get off your ass and go to work and help pay these bills. I don't want to hear that. Oh, what a white man. We've been dealing with that since we got off the slave plantation. They didn't want us to work. Black men found a way to work. Voluntarily and involuntarily. Even after slavery. There's always a place somewhere where you can work. There was a time I picked up cans and bottles. That's beneath you. I'd rather sell drugs. Well, take the chance, sell some drugs, and end up in prison the rest of your damn life. We always got to pay the piper. We always got to suffer the consequences of our actions. So be it. If you want to do that, because you don't want to work at McDonald's, well, go out there. Either the police mess around get caught up with the police, or one of those other people selling drugs will shoot your ass in the head and whatever we do, there's consequences for our actions. In order, if we truly want liberation, it takes work. Here we are. We don't want to share a reality temple video. We don't want to invite people to the channel. We don't want to do nothing like we don't want to do a damn thing, but I guess it's, this stuff's supposed to just fall out the sky and be given to you on a plate. That's not life. So either you a liar or you lazy. One of the LL or you a loser. Nothing's going to change unless we change it. So, brother, and then folks want me. There was a brother got angry at me because I want to use my voice. 
let's start a boycott against Chinese restaurants because Chinese people don't treat black folks right. What you gonna do for me? What you gonna do? You wanna use my channel, my voice, for your idea to start some kind of Chinese boycott uh, restaurants or whatever. What you gonna do for me? And what you gonna There's been so many things that's held us down. But now it looks like things are finally coming around. I know we've got a long, long way to go. And where we'll end up, I don't know. But we won't let nothing hold us back. We're putting our show together. We're polishing up our act. People always do me, be careful what they do. Don't go around breaking young girls' hearts. He and mother always do me, be careful what you love. Be careful what you do, when you love me come the truth. Hey, hey, I feel it, Jane, not my love. She's just a girl who claims that I am the one. But the kid is not my son. Do, 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 do. She says I am the one. Who oh, no. But the kid is not my son. He, he, he. He, he, he. <laughs> I ain't impressed. The teacher said, imagine how Michael Jackson felt when he told Joseph, I want out of the Jackson 5. Michael wanted his freedom. I'm making this particular video about the reality of simple and how it changed my views and um, some of my um, concepts about life. But first, I want to say that I want to thank uh, Angel Snub Number Seven for uh, being there for me, administering to me over YouTube and in person over the phone. Um, the brother believed in me to make these videos. He uh, he gave me the opportunity. He gave me the free will to make these videos that I make in association with the reality simple on earth. Uh, I want to say that if I would have had a brother like this in my life 10, 15 years ago, I probably wouldn't have took the path that I took. But that was my experience. This brother's a good role model for us. I do want to say something right now. Um, there is a YouTuber who has really got in my heart, and that is Angel Snub Nup 7. He reminds me a lot of my father. My father died last year of a heart attack. And Angel Snub Nup 7.
Huh. Exactly, Don. Exactly. Don says these black organizations are already being labeled as black identity extremists. That's right. So it won't take too much of nothing. You either shut up or ship out, whichever you want to do. It's just a matter of time. Now, if we was intelligent, if we wasn't so delusional, if we were smart, I believe, I don't know, so that's why I said I believe, I believe that we might have a chance to really progress if Donald Trump becomes president. Because Donald Trump is different than any other person that has been in the White House. And he has a different mindset. But see, there's a narrative that's being spun against him. And I believe the narrative, I, I keep saying I believe, I believe the narrative is being spun because there's a group of people who know that this man is the callus that can open some doors for you if you know how to knock. Donald Trump told black America, vote for me. What you got to lose? You should take him up on that offer. But you're a slave and you don't know how nothing really worked. You're just emotional. You don't understand. And you cannot take advantage of those things that come to you. They say there's a lot of things about Donald Trump like Donald Trump actually released a lot of black people out of these jails and these prisons. And there's a lot of things that we don't know. The man, you can't expect him to be perfect. And you don't expect him to be on your side like that. It's not about that. We talked about a symbiotic relationship a couple of video live streams ago. That's what you're looking for. I believe, I cannot say I know. I believe we can use Donald Trump as part of a symbiotic relationship. He can help you. It is delusional to live in the United States of America and believe you can make moves and you're only going to do it with black people. That ain't how life works. That's not how it's going to work in America. You're going to have to deal with everybody that live here. Somewhere down the line. Somewhere. You're going to have to live and deal with people that live here. It's just like. If you live in. In a house with your family members. You got to deal with everybody that live in the house. How the hell you you just going to come in the house and you going to live and you can't in, re, in, interact with everybody in the house. That's not that's, that's dumb. You live in this house. You're going to have to learn how to finesse with everybody in the house. And the main folks that you got to learn how to finesse with are the ones who hold the power. See, in your family, you can get you can get a little something from your brother. You can get a little something from your sister. But the one that you really want to finesse 
is mama and daddy because they got the resources. They got the power. And that's the situation where we're in. You don't know how to finesse. You call yourself a Mac daddy. Some of y'all, I'm a pimp. Well, where your pimping skills at? Where your Mac daddy skills at? But you don't know how to use the Mac daddy skills when it comes to these people. You don't know how to use your pimp. You only know how to pimp your own folks. You only know how to Mac daddy Low self-esteem, helpless women. That's the only thing you know how to do. But see, the white man and those in power, they know how to mac daddy. They know how to pimp everybody. That's how they got where they at. I believe I heard Louis Farrakhan talk about Donald Trump. But he talked about Donald Trump in a stupid way. Run Donald. He want Donald Trump to be president so Donald Trump can inspire suffering upon black America. Cut welfare. Uh, do whatever you can to hurt the black people. So, because if you hurt the black people, it'll make them do something. It'll make them do for themselves. Make them run the fire con. And they run the fire con to do what? Fire con ain't got nothing to give you. And why you want the people to suffer? You want them to hurt. For what? I guess your ass gonna be running and you gonna be running to Donald Trump too. Cause you gonna be suffering. You don't have nothing. None of these folks don't have nothing. No, nope. <laughs> that's another thing, Don. Don says he never heard President uh no president mention Farrakhan. Every president, even when I was in the nation, starting with Ronald Reagan, Farrakhan tried to get their attention. He talked about Reagan. He talked about uh, Bush. Every president, he run his mouth about the president, and none of them, they just ignore him, trying to get their attention. They don't mention him at all. Some of these senators... They uh they mentioned him, some of these representatives and senators or whatever. But I, I've never heard I, Ronald Reagan never mentioned his name. Clinton never mentioned his name to my knowledge. None of these, just like Brother Don said, none of the, none of I mean he really be trying to get their attention too. They never mentioned him. Oh, I've never heard Obama. Uh, Obama took a picture with him. I don't know if he, I don't think he was president then, though. I think he was a senator in Chicago. When he became president, he didn't talk about Farrakhan either. He really be trying, he really be trying to get the spotlight. He want the spotlight so he can do nothing. He has nothing to offer. 40 years have proven he has nothing to offer. What you want all this attention for, sir? Now, for me, I'm looking at Donald Trump and I don't give a damn about politics. It's just a strategy. It's just a resource to get me where I want to go. Donald Trump don't have is, is not, I don't look at him as a as a want to be a, a friend or nothing like that. No, I see him as a as some as a as a tool, as a resource to get me what I want. Going back to what we talked about, a symbiotic relationship. 
Donald is happy. I'm happy. It ain't about friendship. It ain't about love. It's about what we can find. It's about a compromise. It's about a, 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 a unity in a manner that benefits us both. And that's that is what black America will follow. They're not going to follow Farrakhan. They're not going to follow Umar Johnson. They're not going to follow none of these, these, these people like that. They're going to follow this government. They're going to follow what's happening out here in our general society like that. That's what they're going to follow. That's, that's all they know. And they're going to follow whether they like it or not. Because this is how it go. That's the situation here. They're not going to follow you. They're going to they're going to follow the general, the leader of this country, whether they like it or not. You will get a few thousand to follow these these people that's leading them to nowhere. And who cares? Because even they, whether they like it or not, still going to be up under the umbrella of this nation, under its rules and its laws. So nobody give a damn about what they don't like. So I see Donald Trump as a resource that you can use to get you what you want. Because the Democrats made it perfectly clear and told those folks, and I don't know because I really don't keep it with, with these people, but I know the Democrats made it very clear to people like Tariq Nasheed, and Yvette Carnell and Tone Talks or whatever their name, the Democrats have made it very clear they're not interested in reparations. They made it very clear. They're not interested. I heard Bernie Sanders say he'll do this and he'll do this, but they're not interested reparations on a federal level. Now, California is supposed to be talking about some type of reparations. And I know small towns in Illinois and some of these, some of these other places. And I think uh, they would like to do, but they say they don't have no money. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, they talk about they, want, they would like to do that, but they don't have any money. Uh, uh, there's a lot of small scale places, small towns that's talking about reparations. Even here in the St. Louis area, uh, they was talking about it. But as far as a federal, on the federal level, the Democrats made it clear they're not interested. And see, reparations can be uh, in many forms. Of course, the main form some of these people want, they want a personal check like they won the lottery. That's what they that's what they really want. Tariq Nasheed would love that. And a whole lot of these folks, that's what they're looking for. They want their personal check. That's my money. Reparations is supposed to be to help repair a people from the harm that somebody caused them. The people, not individuals, what is in the best interest of what is good for the people. It's not about individuals so that you can try to be in competition with Beyonce and Jay-Z. You want free money and you don't even give a damn about your ancestors. Most of these folks don't even give a damn about their ancestors. Go on the street 
and just ask basic black history questions to the average black person on the street. They don't even know, they don't, don't, even, know, don't even know their own history. In America, I'm not talking about no Kemet, I'm talking about black American history. A lot of these people, we just had Martin Luther King holiday. They don't give, they didn't give a damn. They treat Martin Luther King holiday just like Christmas or whatever, just a day off. They don't give a damn about Dr. King. They don't give a damn about the civil rights movement. I that's why I, that's why you'll never, that's why I always say, I'm not giving my life. I'm not fighting for these ingrates. They're not worth it. Here we are. We got Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. Here we are talking logic. Here we are talking sense. And they want to ignore that. Good advice. Well, you just keep doing what you're doing. And you might get what Farrakhan want for your ass. Some suffering. Instead of progress. Reality's temple on earth, I can relate with that guy. I can say he's talking sense because he has intelligence and he doesn't come up with rubbish. He comes up with well thought conversations. He's thought about this. He's still thinking about it as right now as we speak about it. And after that, he'll be thinking about it because he's a thinker. He's not just a doer taking information and repeating it he's a thinker he's been intrigued his mind's been intrigued by reality by things on earth that have woken him up so enough respect to him one of the greatest minds on your tube who ain't got no establishment i don't think i don't know what he what what he has or what he does but the greatest minds sometimes don't have much, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't have much. I, I barely just got this in my head and a few things, no responsibilities though. So, it's just about communicating this video. It's tricky, it's tricky. <laughs> talking about not falling into the teacher trap not falling into the website trap so today what teachers can you learn from we just told you that the Aka Wu tells you that we're all the great teacher at the same time so who you gonna learn from you're gonna learn from brothers like Sarnetta you're gonna learn the positives and negatives from brothers like Sarnetta you're gonna learn the positives and negatives of people like brother polite the positives and negatives of people like Sarah Sutton Seti. You're going to learn from Maurice Muhammad, Talik Ibn Rod. You're going to learn from Netter Cat. You're going to learn. you definitely going to learn from King Noble. you definitely going to learn a little something something from Brother Daku. <laughs> yes.
myself. Even, even with all the oppression, we were accomplishing things far greater than the black and blacks have done. They've done very little. Except bring you the teaching, the belief. Because that's all teachings is, I believe. We don't need to believe no more. We need to know. If you can have the father and the mother, the two parent household is the best environment, the best situation for children. I will never tell you that I've never said that. At the same time, it's about being competent. It's about the quality of parents not the quantity women human females have been raising both genders just fine by themselves many animals do it there are animals that don't that will never know their mother or their father and they doing just well you don't need a penis in the house and a penis does not guarantee a successful family what's successful about a family when you got a man in your house and he depending on you and your welfare check What's, what's, what's successful about that? Tell me. If you got a, a man and he need to leave, he need to live with a woman on, on welfare, what is he bringing to the situation? Just because he's there to play. He can play with those children in his own house, out on the street some damn where. What benefit is he bringing? What is he doing for those children just to have a penis in the house. I say, and I always said, tell you the, the old saying, it's better to be by yourself than in the company of a fool. And even in that movie, Claudine, those women, those other women was on the bus with Claudine, they was talking about how, how those men had done them. Because a lot of men want the pleasure of sex, but they don't want the responsibility of sex. Because once you do that, being a father, being a provider, 
is a 24 hour job. And some of you don't even like working your regular job. As soon as you get home, you want to get you a beer. You tired. Well, being a father is 24 hours. There's no, there's no breaks. It's 24 hours a day until that child under the law of the United States turned 18. Then you're not responsible no more. But until then, it's 24 hours a day. You don't hear them talking about, yeah, man, I sure told that putty tat up last night. You don't hear them bragging about their, their sex appades. When the pressure of being a father, a provider, when they can't handle that. You don't hear them bragging no more. You don't hear them bragging to their friend. Yeah, man, she she was really, really tight. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I got the big stuff. I opened that thing up, boy. I told that. Uh, why don't you now with you? Why don't you tell them about how you tore up them bills to pay for all them six, seven, eight children you got? You don't hear them bragging about that. How they paying those bills. How they paying for college. How they paying for high school graduation. How they bought a car for their teenagers. You don't hear them bragging about all that kind of good stuff. You know, the, the, the sex of pain. How many women they been in. It's easy to screw. Don't take nothing. It's easy to be a dog. But it's difficult to be a man. It's difficult to be a father. That's a 24-hour job. It wear you out. And you want to make it easier for these bums. Because the, the only one, only man that want to live with a woman on welfare in her house is a damn bum. And a, a lot of these women would do that because they suffer from low self-esteem. Just to have your raggedy, nasty, lazy ass laying up next to her because she suffer from low self-esteem. What kind of man would want to lay up with her? You don't have nothing to offer. Nothing. Except a ding a -ling. And next thing you know, she got another baby to feed. And you gone. Because you're not a father. You're not a man. We say it on this channel all the time. These are not men. These are Mandingo. Because that's what the Mandingo done. What did the Mandingo do on the slave plantation? The Mandingo was made to fight amongst himself for survival. And that's what you do. You fight each other every day. Some of you would do it in the boxing ring, on the basketball court. You're fighting and playing against each other. On the street, you shoot and kill each other. The Mandingo. The Mandingo. That's what they've done on the slave plantation. And the Mandingo was made to breed and make babies to produce other slaves. And he don't have to worry about taking care of those babies because the slave master took care of them. Uh, she's on welfare. Who's taking care of her? The slave master. Who got her pregnant? The slave master? Maybe sometimes. Who got her pregnant? The Mandingo. That's who got her pregnant. I thought slavery ended in 1865. I thought it did, but clearly it didn't. So tell the truth. Tell the whole story. I'm telling the whole story. I'm not trying to sell a narrative. I'm tired of being around weak ass men 
The only thing you doing with this two parent household garbage and this garbage story about the women on welfare and the white man did this. Selling a narrative, a story. For what? So you can recruit them so that you can pimp the men. Because they stupid like that. So you go to the Nation of Islam to get pimp. You go to the Moor Science Temple to get pimp. You go to the Pan African stuff to get pimp. You get pimped by other men. And who's the best pimper? The white man is the best pimper. That's why your ass is mad and angry. Because he is the pimp. And back in the 1970s, they used to call him, the white man, the man. Because he was the man. He controlled it all. And even if you do do something for yourself, you still got to go through the man. I don't care how pro-blackly black your ass is. Your, your own Facebook. You don't even support alternative uh, platforms. None of these suckers. Is Umar Johnson on an alternative black? He talking all this Pan-African crap. Is he on an alternative? Is he on a black platform? If Umar Johnson, Sanetta, Tariq, if all of them move to a black platform, it could grow. They are comfortable on the white man because this is where their money is at. And they don't want to leave their money because this is what the man provides. The man who take care of the black women on welfare, who take care of these men on welfare and who ain't on welfare. Jay-Z is rich because of the man. Will Smith is rich is because of the man. If you take the man out of the equation, they don't have nothing. And when the man gets sick of them, the man will take it all away and they know it. That's why they keep their damn mouth shut and they be careful about what come out their damn mandingo ass mouth. Jay-Z is mandingo. Cat Williams running his mouth is mandingo. Tahaka Bay is mandingo. Sanetta is mandingo. Louis Farrakhan is mandingo. Slave plantation. And that's why they don't like Angel Snuffing Up 7 because I see it exactly for what it is. I'm going to call it for what it is. I'm going to tell the story for what it is. If I can be real with myself, I damn sure going to be real with you. Because I could tell the story to try to justify and try to make myself look good. Oh, I'm so happy. I don't never make no mistakes. I'm this and that. And I'm, I'm doing myself a disservice because it's a lie. It's a lie. So we'll never grow. We'll never mature. Living in denial We'll never grow, we'll never mature, we'll never progress lying to ourselves. Selling these narratives. The white man this and the white man that. And you ain't no damn better. You ain't no better. This is the history of conquerors. On the earth. Even before. The Europeans went to Africa. They was doing the same thing. Killing each other in wars. They was doing the same thing. The only difference is. The Europeans. Are smarter. They're more intelligent. And they had better weapons. That's the only difference. And we know that those Africans would do the same thing because 
the little weapons that they do get, you see what they're doing with them. What are they doing with them? Where are these Pan-Africans at? Where, where your happy ass? Come on this platform. What are they doing with the AK-47s and the grenade launchers and the weapons that they did not make, that they got from somebody else? What are they doing with them? Are they killing? Are they fighting against the, the, the invaders? No, they're killing themselves. The same thing they was doing before the invaders showed up. That's why it was easy for a small group of Europeans, a small group of Europeans to conquer all of Africa like that because they wasn't together. They was fighting each other. They was different. And they didn't give a damn if the other uh, nation was, was uh, taken over or conquered. They didn't give a damn. Matter of fact, some of them helped the Europeans conquer their neighbors and then the Europeans turned on their happy ass. And we supposed to want to be part of that type of stupidity. You want to claim and want to be part of some idiots. I don't want to be them. They stupid. And they still stupid to this day. Hell, those people over there make Europeans kings and queens over there and the Chinese folks. You can go on YouTube, you can do a Google search. You will see them making uh, Asian people and, and, and uh, Europeans honorary kings and queens over there. The hell with those folks copying them. I don't want to be there. And you put on the front, your ass don't want to be go over there either. Take your ass over there. You don't want to leave uh, uh, the welfare system. You don't want to leave uh, this country like that because ain't nothing you mess around and mess up over there you on your own the government not going to help you and then when you do get help over there guess who giving the help it's the Europeans so you might as well keep your ass might as well stay here I've never been around people uh, Deacon's a reality. Are, are we that? I've never been around people that that just don't think at all. Why are we so damn? Uh, why are we? Are we? Maybe something wrong with me. Maybe something wrong with me. Cause I just don't get it. I mean, it seems as though we we don't think at all. I understand being a Muslim. I understand being a Moorish and all these different things, but I, I was a Muslim. I was under the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. And I still wasn't this damn brainwashed and stupid like these folks are. I never got angry because somebody didn't want to follow the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. That's your choice. You are my brother. You are my sister. I would go to different people, different meetings. I would even go to, to where some of these gang members hanged out. I got along with everybody in my community. I never got angry at nobody because they rejected the teaching. You're my brother and my sister.
Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. What dear? Cause I keeps it real like that. I keeps it real. So you're soul brother, number one. My brother Angel Snubnop 7 at the Reality Simple. And to give props to him, because I listen to all of Angel Snubnop 7's videos, I think that um, he comes from a different angle. And there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out, and I try to catch all of them. I, I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from, and I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KMBS, and he has also challenged the black supremacy movement as well. And I have nothing against that, because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand, cannot stand and will not stand, and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. They call me Sniffy. My cousin is, 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 is Dr. Omar Young. I'm here to tell you, give y'all a y'all a message. Y'all better leave my cousin alone. That's what y'all better do. My my cousin Umar doing good work for y'all. Y'all some stupid ass niggas, man. And y'all ain't giving they ain't giving the man no money. Y'all y'all. <laughs> y'all think y'all think because y'all gave my cousin uh, 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 a little money, y'all think y'all uh, y'all think y'all own him? Y'all don't own a motherfucker that up in here. Himself, and you don't realize it. You don't realize <clears throat> it that God has been in prison. <clears throat> the devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been in prison, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why, you understand what I'm saying? You, yes, sir. You have to bring reality's temple here on earth. Reality's <laughs> temple here on earth. Because yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance, uh, to subscribe please do please do subscribe to his channel he's a he's a good brother you know he's trying to he's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things he has good information to provide so please do check out his channel if you get a chance uh let's see talik says can you send a shout out to my platform the realities temple on on earth internet ministry our theme this year is after purge comes the heal sub shout out to your platform talik all the best to you guys with continuing to stretch in perspective to stretch in what is possible and to continue to bring healing into the space of yourself and others yes
ourselves. Even, even with all the oppression, we were accomplishing things far greater than the black and blacks have done. They've done very little. Except bring you the teaching, the belief. Because that's all teachings is, I believe. We don't need to believe no more. We need to know. Also, I wanted to come talk to you guys because I'm lonely. <laughs> I'm lonely. I don't have any friends. I don't have any friends. So my only friend is coming on YouTube and talking to you guys. Will, will you be my friend? I wish you could be. I wish you could be. I wish you could be my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It kills me when people who think they got friends, who think they got family, and they make mockery of some of us who choose to be robot basically by ourselves. Well, I did. I tried to roll with people. And you see what kind of problems messing with people can cause. The greatest peace I have ever had in my life was just when I was a little boy, it was just me and my dog. And we would go out to the pond, we would go out to the river, I'd catch fish, catch frogs and chase ducks and rabbits. I had no problem. I didn't have no problem until you start dealing with people, including family. Because even your family not right. You can come on YouTube and put on this show like you have this happy family. I very much doubt it. Especially nowadays because people are so selfish. They don't care about others. It's all about me, what I want, what I need. They don't care about how others feel. As long as I'm comfortable, I don't care nothing about you. So for you to lie to me, like you have this perfect life because you got all these people, ain't nobody having fun dealing with a lot of folks. And a lot of these murders, that we see is because somebody was trying to be friends and associate with somebody. And it got them killed. Women get raped trying to have friends. I said, no, Johnny. I said, we just friends, Johnny. There's nothing spectacular. You talking to the wrong person because I've been on this planet for 60 years and I have examined my life and those around me dealing with people is problems it's not you get problems with money it, it gets worse but you're going to have problems just dealing with people period there was 13 people a few years ago that jumped on us People we interacted with. Had I left them alone, it wouldn't have happened. Just stay over here. Say what I got to say. Don't bother. Don't mess with them at all. I didn't have that kind of problem rolling alone. People are so peaceful. People are so hateful. I've never been... I'm going to talk about the crazy house. Those of you who have not 
I'm not familiar with this channel, but I, 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 I've been in the crazy house for 10 years. I was in the middle of the institution for 10 years. And people laugh. Oh, 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 oh. You was in the crazy house for 10 years. Oh, 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 oh. They make mockery. I've never experienced the insanity, the evil of people in the so-called free world. I was treated better. I was more respected. I felt more safer in the crazy house than out here. You gotta watch your back out here. Somebody wanna steal from you out here. They wanna cheat, deceive. They will kill you quick out here. More so than in the crazy house. I was able to unite the mentally insane so that we could change things to make things better for us in that facility. I was able to unite them. Nobody was running around to about, you can't be leader. What you talking about? Blah, blah. There was none of that. They saw that what I was offering was our best option. And I asked them, if you support me, I will make it better for us. But you got to back me up. So I put myself out there. And they backed me up. And we changed things. That's when our enemies decided I need to be transferred to another facility. And then when I began to do the same thing in the other facility, they sent me back. But by the time they sent me back to where I came from, it gave them enough time to destroy them and break them down and put them right back, well, almost right back where, I, where they were before we stood up for ourselves. We come into this world alone. We come into this world butt naked. How many of you came into this world wearing a diamond ring? Behind the wheel of a fancy car in a mansion, you came into this world. We came into this world alone. Butt naked with nothing. And when you was a child, you didn't care about diamond rings and swimming pools and fame and fortune. You didn't care. You just wanted to play and be happy and enjoy your life. But as we grow, the environment takes our innocence away from us and begin to condition our mind when we were satisfied just being happy and butt naked we were satisfied with that. As long as we had some food, shelter, we could be butt naked and happy. But as we mature and we grow into this environment, this sick environment, it tells us we need fancy cars. We need all these false ass friends. And we need to be friends with this imaginary being that we never see. It begins to clog our minds with all this unnatural thinking. And it's gone on for so long, we think that it's natural. We think it's natural for us to want to live in a big house and swimming pools and movie stars. We think that's natural. To be greedy. What you need all that house for? There's only two of y'all in the damn house. What you need that big swimming pool for? It's only two of y'all. What you need all that for? When we come into this world butt naked and we happy. Now you're not happy. I, I want to be a success. What is a success? Getting things. Things that don't care nothing about you. I want people to, even though they're false friends, 
I just want to be surrounded by people. People like me. How long? How long has Oprah Winfrey been best friends with Gayle King? Pretty long time. 30, 40 years or whatever, I don't know. Out of all those years, you would think that Oprah Winfrey and Gayle King would have a lot of girlfriends that would be just as close and it would be a large group of them. But you don't never see that. It's always... If you can connect with somebody, it's always that one person and not this large group because you're going to have problems in the group. Because if it's a large group, somebody in the group, why Gail King? Why Oprah like her better than me? You're going to start having problems. Why, why Oprah give her, loan her $100,000 and won't loan me. You're going to start having problems dealing with people. Including your family. The best piece you ever got. When you was butt naked. And alone. The happiest people are those who are alone. The people with problems are those trying to blend in with this insanity. It wouldn't be so bad, but in this society, in this environment, people's minds are not stable. Because they don't do nothing wrong. It's all about them. Everybody wants attention. Look at me. So you can't sing, you can't dance, but I got a big booty and I'm going to put this piece of plastic through my butt cheeks and I'm going to go on Instagram and show it off. Then I can even get folks to give me money because I humiliate myself by putting a piece of string between my ass cheeks and shake it and people will, will actually give me money. You're willing to humiliate and degrade yourself for attention. Then there are those who understand your sick mind and they will become your manager and they will pimp you out to the highest bidder. Shake that ass. Shake that thing. Go ahead, baby. Put you on a pole, swing, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I like that. They know your mind is sick. They know you want to feel good, so come to Jesus. Come to Allah, fly to Allah. And they sell you these dreams and these hopes. And you give them your money. And some of you give them your body. This is the activity of dealing with others, but if you are alone, you don't have to worry about all that. When you're butt naked and don't have nothing, you come in here butt naked and alone. And when you die, I don't care how many people are around you. You can die with others in a plane crash. 270 people died today on Pan Am uh, Flight 880 or whatever. You, you died at the same time with other people, but everybody going to die alone. Everybody going to have their own experience. You're not going to, you're going to die at the same time others did, but all of us are going to experience our own death. So it don't make no difference if you're surrounded by your loved ones. It don't make no difference if you're drunk 
and a car hits you and you're down the side of the road and a dog start eating on your flesh. It don't make no difference how you die. You're going to die alone. It don't make any difference. We come into this world alone with nothing. And you're going to die alone. And you can't all this stuff that you're willing to lie and die for. Kill others and slander and gossip over. All this nothing garbage that we fight over. You can't take none of that with you. What are they accomplishing in Israel and the Hamas war? What are they accomplishing? What is the benefit of the Ukraine-Russian war? What is the benefit? And all these people are dying. No respect for, your, for human life. And you doing it for what? Because of land. Because of this God you never see. Land that will be here when you dead and gone. Land that was here before you came into existence. That don't give a damn about you and you willing to kill other folks. Land that is dead. As far as we concerned, because it cannot, it has no conscience, it does not talk, it does not walk, it does not care whether you are living, we are living or dead. But those who can give us comfort, another human being, we willing to kill for gold and silver and all these material things. Y'all wanna know why nobody wanna come here? It's because of y'all. Tell y'all the truth. Y'all are the most boring saints I've ever been around. Just gotta tell y'all this. If Bishop not gonna say it, I will, I will tell y'all. Y'all are the most boring people I have ever been around in my life. I get dreadful every time it's time to worship with y'all. Cause y'all don't bring nothing to the table. I, I'm tired of bringing stuff to the table and none of y'all got nothing to bring. Y'all worried about stuff that happened yesterday, wasting time. Y'all y'all worried about stuff that don't even matter, wasting time. My new attitude is, if you're not going to come to church to worship, stay home. And I say this all the time. I don't need none of y'all. I love everyone in here. I, I love everyone. I don't need not any one of y'all in here. At all. Y'all don't do nothing for me, but look at me while I'm saying anyhow. Y'all are a bunch of boring, dead people. And I swear to God, I swear, I swear on everything I love. If it don't change, y'all not gonna see any benefit from the Lord. Y'all not, y'all not, y'all, if y'all cannot worship with song, with song, we're not even talking about listening to the word. We're talking about praise and worship. If y'all can't even listen to songs and be happy that someone's taking their time out to sing for y'all, and mind you, I don't get paid for this. So I really just sing to y'all for my hip, uh, for my benefits. And just for y'all to look real ugly and stupid, I'm tired of the church for wasting my time, Mark. Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Edmondrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. 
This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. The Mississippi Campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Create an, an economy. Create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're fake, you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign. There's been so many things that's held us down But now it looks like things are finally coming around I know we've got a long, long way to go And where we'll end up, I don't know But we won't let nothing hold us back We're putting our shirts together We're polishing up our act And if you've ever been held down before I know you refuse to be held down anymore Don't you let nothing, nothing Stand in your way I want y'all to listen, listen To every word I say, every word I say Ain't no stopping us now We're running up Cornelius, and as always, in parting, we wish you love, peace, and soul.